<laughs> You're welcome for the intro. Hi guys, it's Jill, and today I have spit in my mouth. <laughs> what else is new? I'm gonna try and go through these questions as quickly as possible. So if I don't answer your question fully, be sure to ask me to explain down in the comments and I will answer as many as I can. If I didn't get to your question, I will probably be doing another Q&A very soon. So keep an eye out on my Instagram. And also there were so many questions on my Instagram asking me advice on this, tips on this. And I decided that in effort to save time and to thoroughly answer those questions, I'm gonna do another video, an advice sort of video but for today these are just simple questions some of them are lengthy some are not so I'm going to try and answer as many as possible I'm thinking 50 right now I have a list let's look at the list okay can you see it's a long list okay I'm gonna get through these as quickly as humanly possible because I want to answer them so that you guys know what's up they're all out of order some are about college some are about lifestyle some are about horses and uh, I'm already a minute and 48 seconds into this intro so let's do this <laughs> question number one would I ever consider putting Zoe in full and the answer is yes I would love to do that however it's expensive can't really afford another horse right now it's a problem if anybody wants to pay for it and then continue to pay for the full I would be so happy Question number two, how do I manage my time between horses and college? As many of you know, I am a college student now. That's crazy. Time management is kind of insane right now. Um, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how my week goes. <laughs> um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I wake up at like 7 or try to get to the barn at 7. I can't really remember. I have a list on my phone <laughs> that's like an organized time management thing. Um, and that's very helpful too is to just write out your timetable. So I do horses in the morning and I ride Zoe and a few others that I'm riding out at my barn. Then I get home, shower, and drive as fast as legally possible to <laughs> school. Then I do that and I try and get all my schoolwork done in class and just pay attention so that I know what's going on. And um, then when I get home, I do any homework if necessary. I'm usually pretty good about getting it done either in class or quickly afterwards. And then I answer YouTube comments, I answer Ask FM questions. I answer my Instagram DMs whenever possible. Like I get so many of those and it's overwhelming, but I try to communicate with you guys as much as possible because I know how much that means. And when you have a problem, you don't know who else to turn to or you don't want to talk to your coach or whatever, some random person on the internet who seems to be a credible source might be a good idea. <laughs> and I'm going to get flooded with DMs. Okay, moving on. Uh, question number three, what is my favorite soup? If you watch my Instagram live streams, you know I eat soup a lot <laughs> and um, tastes really good with chocolate milk. Um, not mixed together, um, but I like chicken noodle soup and vegetable. Question number four, my favorite way to clip Zoe is a full body clip, just because she is an excitable individual and uh, it helps keep the sweat levels down so that I don't have to hose her when it is cold. Number five, fave equestrian brands. Um, this is so hard. I really like Noble. I really like Total Saddle Fit is really good. There are some other like random clothing brands, but I only have like a few items from them. So I don't know. Number six, what makes a good trainer? And this can be answered very simply and a good trainer is somebody who listens to you, who answers your questions thoroughly and makes sure that you understand, makes you remember why you do it, to have fun and enjoy the horse and uh, to be as safe for both parties as possible, the horse and the rider. Number seven, why did I start my Instagram? Actually, this is a funny story, um, and I haven't really ever voiced it on the internet before. I just kind of always said, yeah, I like curses and I want to post it, but there was this Instagrammer. I will not name her because it's embarrassing, but I saw her Instagram and she was posting about her horse and her life and stuff, and I was like, that's so cool. I want to do it. Why does she have so many followers? I can do it better. And the competitive <laughs> nature in me got the best of me and I created it and then started going as hard as possible to uh, grow it and make it bigger and people ask me questions about that all the time but honestly when I was growing my Instagram to what it is now is so different like the methods I use don't really work anymore so Number eight, what time do I wake up? I wake up naturally at seven every single day, but uh, because of school and writing, I have been waking up super early. I forgot to finish the answer to the other question. Okay, reverting. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I wake up at uh, five and I am on Zoe by 6.30. That's when the sun comes up during the summertime. And uh, I ride her, either do dressage or a gallop set or the other horse if I'm not doing a gallop set because those take a little while. <clears throat> Number nine. What is my motivation to keep making YouTube videos? My body says too much speaking. <laughs> 
<laughs> it tasted like Activia yogurt <laughs> and I haven't had that. So my motivation for YouTube, um, number one, get it out of the way, monetary earn. It's wonderful. Uh, I don't get paid very much, but it is definitely helpful in purchasing new things for ponies. But yeah, I just, I really like making them. People ask me to make all sorts of videos and I'm a people pleaser and a half, so I like to do what people tell me to do. And um, I just wish that somebody had had an account or a channel, sort of like mine, maybe better, that um, could like help me along the way and give me advice and tips and be like, ah, oh, oh my god, that just that made so much sense and you know what I'm saying? And I don't know, I just, I think it's fun. I love filming. I love editing and watching our progress through the videos. It's like a diary. Okay, moving on. Number 10, will I buy a, buy a prospect or a new horse? And the answer is no. <laughs> Those things are expensive. I would love to buy a project horse and flip it and sell it, but unfortunately I do not have the funds nor the means to do that. But yeah, I do have project horses that sort of come and go and uh, a lot of you have been asking me about Bubble, so I'll just throw it in here. She has had a few accidents. If you've been on my Instagram, you know. <laughs> Some just like things have happened that have prevented her from coming injuries that were just freak accidents <laughs> so she she is healing and she will be here at some point I'm gonna ride her I'm determined number 11 if I were an animal what would I be if not a horse or a unicorn and what would be special about me I think I would be a fox because I think they're dope and I would be a really cool fox that had a black spot on its butt don't know why <laughs> number 12 what are my plans post college and with my horses and what are my goals with that sort of thing um, so post college I have no idea I either want to be in the FBI or work with horses or do something in marketing I have no idea I'm so at a loss I'm going crazy what am I gonna do like what are my goals with horses it's people always ask me what my goals are with horses and I just I don't have one and I know that's super underwhelming but I just don't I just kind of am enjoying it and trying to get better every single day and learn as much as I possibly can um, I don't really have any desire to be an upper level eventer or show jumper or anything I mean that'd be dope but I don't think I can do that chase your goals kids <laughs> 13. Why did I start riding? I started riding because I have loved horses since the day I was born. If you want, you can click up here. Uh, there's a little card there that'll be detailing the link to my How I Got My Horses Part 1 and Part 2 video, and that's kind of like my riding story and whatnot, so yes. Number 14. What is my favorite thing about Zoe? My least favorite, and what makes her unique? My favorite thing about Zoe is her personality. It's just insane. It's all over the place. She is crazy crazy bird but it's mostly just because she gets bored and she needs stimulation like constantly but she's also super super loving and just has all these weird quirks about her and I just I love it my least favorite thing about her would probably have to be that we score bad in dressage it's <laughs> like I wish she was just a little more chill but also it makes it a fun and challenging ride and makes me it constantly pushes me to be a better rider and think about what I'm doing to affect my horse and how I can be a better rider. Um, however, I wish that we could win an event because I have never placed above third. I suck! <laughs> um, what makes her unique? She, she likes to spread her own shavings. I don't know. Number 15, how has Zoe impacted my riding versus Bo? Bo was just sort of a front end train <laughs> and you just kind of had to pull a lot and he made me very heavy handed and then when I got on Zoe it was like oh I have to go the other way I can't be on my hand at all I have to be super independent in my leg seat and core it just made me really aware of my body a little bit not saying that like Bo was bad I mean I was riding him bad I shouldn't have been riding him all off of my hand but he was very strong okay she's just made me a more well-rounded rider and the things I've learned on her apply to any horse number 16 what is my major. I'm currently majoring in psychology for the FBI, but I have no idea if that's what I'm going to continue to do. <laughs> Number 17, what is my favorite breed? Obviously thoroughbred. I love me some off the tracks. If you don't know what OTTP stands for, it is off the track thoroughbred. <laughs> Number 18, how long have I been riding? I think I've said in my How I Got My Horses video 11 or 12 years. I don't really know, honestly. 19, do I want to train horses when I'm older? Maybe. 20, how to deal with online trainers and what my opinion of them is. Like the people that comment and are like, you should use a bitless bridle or you should not do that with your horse and ah, you should take that. Sometimes those people are right and sometimes you should definitely listen to them or at least think about why they're saying it, especially if you get the comment a few times. However, sometimes it's just people that have no idea what they're talking about and you slide, delete, and then <laughs> problem solved. Do I have any siblings? I have two sisters. Uh, one lives in Massachusetts and the other lives that way in Arkansas. 
that way. Number 22, uh, what's a good first competition horse breed? And I get this question a lot and it's really sort of an arbitrary question. It's not really a breed that like makes it, I mean obviously don't get a young horse or one that hasn't like done things yet because if you're a learning rider and you're trying to figure your way through the discipline or whatever you're doing, having a horse that doesn't know it either is just really bad combo. And I mean it works for some people but most of the time green on green equals black on blue. <laughs> black, black and blue, black and blue. <laughs> Most people go quarter horse or something like that. Um, any breed really works. Um, just something that's been going and has been doing the discipline is really helpful to help you get an established, confident start in your sport. Number 23, what brand eyeliner do I use? Not currently wearing any mint to put on some for this video, but I forgot. Um, I use Kat Von D liquid liner. What is it called? I don't know. It's Number 24, how did I find my barn? Well, actually, I was with one trainer and she moved, and so I had to go find another one, and we just went to one she recommended. I went there and then she moved and I followed her to Salem, which is where I currently am at. And in English then it's just a preposition, it's just a bad joke. Now actually, announcing to the internet, we're moving. Um, uh, things just sort of aren't working out out there anymore. So we are gonna pack all bags and move to somewhere else. And that is a-okay, no hard feelings on anybody. Um, but I'm excited for change. I've been out at Salem for six years and um, we just kind of used it up, you know? I mean, it's been there, done that. It's time for a change and sometimes change is good. And I'm really excited. Um, I'm still training with Gina, my trainer, and um, we're just going to move barns and continue what we're doing there. We will have a cross country field, jumping arena, dressage arena, all that jazz, awesome paddocks and trails out the wazoo. Apparently um, there's a cow field <laughs> in between the farm and the trails. So um, Zoe's terrified of cows, fun fact. Hate that, so annoying. She will take off in the other direction. So um, we're gonna get her over cows and then we're gonna go on the trail ride. <laughs> but yeah, so there's that. Um, number 25, uh, Zoe's favorite treats and least. Her favorite treats are knicker makers or carrots. And the knicker makers that I buy are like the multi blend or whatever, they come in the purple bag. They're carrot flavored, so makes sense. And her least favorite is apples and peppermints and pretty much anything else. She will spit it out. 26, biggest accomplishment. Um, I'd say my biggest accomplishment is getting to ride a bunch of young horses at an early age and being successful at it. When I was like 14 or 15, I started riding off the tracks um, because my last horse, Bo, would go lame frequently for whatever reason. So I just got to ride a bunch of young horses and I did pretty well on them considering I was like 14 or 15. And um, I got them a solid start in the eventing world and then they were sold to one person or another and that's how I got Zoe. Number 27, would I ever show Western slash have I? No, I have not. And uh, like my second or third lesson in, I was riding in a Western saddle and I was like, yo, can I switch to English so I can drink, please? I mean, I've ridden in a Western saddle since then on horses that I ride out at my barn or just randomly, but I don't really ride Western. It's not my fave. 28, my funny fall I would say would be on Dragonfly. So my second horse, he stopped at like a teeny tiny x rail when I was probably like 11 or 12 and Gina was coaching me at the time and he stopped and it was slow motion. I just slid down his neck and fell off. She told me to put my vest on and I was like no I'm not gonna fall off and she was like <laughs> trying to go fast. 29. Am I gonna get a new horse? I hope not. I want to keep Zoe forever. Number 30. Mare or gelding? Mares. I was such a gelding person before I bought Zoe and now I am such a mare person. They're so smart and you just can connect with them on a different level than you can gelding. And if you're a hardcore gelding person, you'll be like, lies. But I swear it's true. I love them. They may a little bit. It gets personal for you. <laughs> Number 31. Am I gonna jump higher soon? Hey, height is kind of arbitrary to me. I mean, you don't have to really jump high to you don't have to jump high to like really prove anything. I mean, it's good to see how high the horse and rider can jump and are comfortable jumping. But on a regular basis, it's kind of like why? Why you can accomplish the same thing on a lower fence. And it's even harder to jump lower fences in my opinion than anyone else that's jumped bigger <laughs> um, because the horses don't respect the jumps as well. But yeah, I mean, we are we are working our way up. Um, we've just been working through some like technical and uh, equitation errors on my part. But I mean, we've been jumping between two six to three six. And um, so <laughs> who cares? Number 32, how old am I and how old is Zoe and how tall are we? I am 18, I will be 19 at the end of September the 30th. And um, Zoe is six. She's such a green bean. Ah, she is 16, three hands tall. And I am five eight or nine. I don't know. The lady at the airport tried to convince me I'm five nine, so 
What is life? <laughs> Number 33, what is the highest I have jumped? 4-3, and that's like a meter five? Yeah, maybe? Oh. We're in America, we use the stupid system, not the metrics, okay? Number 34, what is my worst fall? I was approaching a prelim table on my 15-2 ham Morgan pony, why am I talking in Southern accent? And neither of us saw a spot and we both went, ah, uh, and he ducked out and I face planted, broke my nose, since, hence the nose job. Number 35, how mad am I that Rolex is no longer Rolex? Kentucky three day event, it's just Kentucky three day event. Slash, am I going? Um, I'm pretty mad, because what do you call it now? Kentucky three day event? That's, there's no shebang. And am I going? I hope so. It's either that or WAG or both. I hope to go to both. I don't know. Number 36, who is my equestrian idol? I have a few. Nick Skelton is a really awesome show jumper. Um, Jim Wofford is a god. And uh, George Morris, obviously. Um, Boyd Martin, I love to watch his equitation. He's like so still all the time. And on cross country, he doesn't wear gloves. Anybody see me riding cross country without gloves? Inspired by Boyd. <laughs> Whom I ran over. And then I absolutely love Will Faudry. Mm, more into that later. 37. How do I afford Zoe? Barrents. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. Love you guys. You rock. Dollar dollar bills, yo. 38. How can Zoe and I improve? We can improve in several areas. Relaxation being number one. And ever since I used the Simply Equine hair analysis supplements, I'm pointing to the video card watch it but ever since then she has been so much more relaxed and calm and workable because before she was just sort of I can't <laughs> um, but yeah relaxation I can always fix my equitation there's always something wrong and um, yeah okay 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 uh, 39 best advice is a rider have fun you should have fun when you're riding that is number one that's why we do this um, if you're not having fun or you're just in it for the ribbons Stay humble because we're always all learning and if you are just claiming that you are the best at 9 or 12 or 19, you're not. <laughs> and we can always learn and always, always improve. Having an ego in the horse world will get you torn down faster than anything. Well, we can ride along. Number 40, how often do I ride and what do I focus on? I ride pretty much every day. If it's not Zoe, it's another horse. I pretty much do flat every single day. I jump once or twice a week and yeah, I focus on bending and lateral movements and getting her to soften to the right, particularly working every day on that grind. <laughs> 41, my favorite phase, cross country. Why would I event if I didn't like cross country? Dirt. Number 42, what is my favorite clinic that I've done? My favorite clinic was hands down the clinic I did with Wolf Audrey. If you watch the video, you may see a lot of errors and a lot of rails and a lot of things, but messing up is what helps us learn. And if you go to a clinic and you expect to be perfect, then you're not gonna learn anything. If you go to a clinic and you mess up a whole lot and the clinician tells you how to fix those things, then you've learned something. So never be embarrassed to mess up at a clinic. But I learned so much from that clinic and it was just the best. And Will just really understood me and Zoe and communicated with me in a way that made sense to me. Um, Cause you know some trainers, it doesn't make sense when they say things and you're like, what? <laughs> Number 43, how often do I clean my tack? I clean my tack every single day. I ride unless I just absolutely don't have time. Please stop eating this pen. So 44 my worst riding habit uh, I really like to look down and I kind of ride like this because my neck is a little wonky from whiplash injuries But uh, yeah, I just I really hate my equitation in pictures I get really bad about my hands and where they need to be and this wrist likes to do this and you can't follow properly like that As well as you can with your hands straight so ice cream cones or coffee or whatever you want to call it and um, so yeah, there's that. Number 45, how often do I go to the barn? I go to the barn every single day. Even if I don't ride, I go out and clean Zoe's stall, poke her, pet her, play with her, whatever, and talk to people that are out there and just, it's, it's my socialization hub. Because <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't talk to people all day long. <laughs> Number 46, why am I focusing more on dressage? This is a question that is commonly misconstrued. Um, like I said, I work five to six days a week on flat work and then I jump once or twice and Zoe always has like a day off or something. But like if you look at my Instagram, there are lots of posts about me doing dressage or my vlogs. I'm mostly doing flat work and that's because I don't really have anybody to film my jumping or and I, I don't really jump that much. So I mean, I guess I understand, but it's not now. You know what I'm saying? Like I've always <laughs> done that just because your horse only has so many jumps in them and there's, uh, there's a thing. I'll try and link it down below. It's called like the math behind jumping your horse or something and they only have so many jumps in them people that jump every single day i'm like you're an idiot <laughs> i'm sorry if you're one of them 
but change that right now. It's not too late because you, it's horses aren't made to jump. They do it so they can run away from things. We've made a game of it, but you know, natural selection, Darwinism, whatever you want to call it, has not necessarily followed that yet. And so the more you jump your horse, the more likely they'll be to break down. So you just have to be super careful with that and working dressage and gallop sets builds that muscle that they need to jump and helps develop their bodies properly. Of course they use different muscles when they're jumping. Once or twice a week is plenty, plenty. You can also do pull work and um, just other things to harden their bones and their muscles and tendons and whatnot so that you don't have a horse that breaks down. Proper conditioning and fitness is key to having a solid riding horse. Number 47, where do I college? I college at University of Arkansas at Little Rock. It is 15 minutes from my house. Number 48 is the follow-up question. Where am I putting Zoe when I'm going to college? Well, <laughs> I'm keeping her. A lot of people haven't realized that I'm already in college. <laughs> so um, she is staying at the barn and uh, when we move barn, she will be at the other one. So, I mean, it's no big deal. Number 49, why I ride with few artificial aids? And this is a question that everybody has been wondering, probably not. So, so if you haven't seen my controversial tag talk video one and two, then you may not know that I have these opinions or if you don't follow my Ask FM. I am a person that does not like artificial aids um, and I say that loosely. So spurs, bits, whips, what have you, all of those things when used in moderation can be very, very useful training tools and they are only as harsh as the rider makes them. That's a very common misconception. None of those things are abusive unless the rider makes them abusive. And um, I highly, 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 highly encourage all of you to look up Training the Three Day Event Horse by Jim Wofford. It's a great book. You can buy it on bitofbritain.com for 30 bucks. Read it educate yourself. It's such a good read and you can read things about how bits affect horses. I'm gonna put all of these links down below, okay? I'll set you guys up, all right? <laughs> and um, so yeah, I mean, there's just all sorts of information out there. And it's so important to educate yourself on what these things do and why are you using them? Some people will use flashes and they're like, it came with the bridle. <laughs> I'm like, no, you're a poor horse. <laughs> like, and flashes aren't bad in every sense. Some people use them for the tongue over the bit, whatever. It's not my business. I don't like them. I prefer to train the horse to accept the things and sometimes that's not always possible. That's an idealistic mindset and training a horse out of a horse bit is also idealistic. I think it can be done. However, it's a lot of hard work and if you're not willing to put that in, you're not. But I'm tangenting. <laughs> the other thing that you need to watch is The Bit Debate by Shelby Dennis. I'll link that down below. It's a great, great video. It's long, information laden, but it is phenomenal on talking about bits versus hackamores, bitless, whatever you want to call it. I get a lot of questions about people telling me that I should use a bitless or a hackamore and it's just stupid. That's the most ignorant thing that you could say to somebody who, number one, has already tried all of those things on their animal. And number two, you have no idea what my horse is like. You have never ridden her in a bit versus a hackamore. And to sum up Shelby's video, bits lay on the soft tissue on the horse's tongue. Are you pulling on the horse's tongue? If you are, you're riding wrong. You're supposed to be communicating gently and softly with the corners of the horse's mouth guiding and half halting. You're not never pulling back directly. You shouldn't be. And I mean, we're all guilty of it. We all mess up. It's called human error. And um, regardless, there's soft tissue here and there's soft tissue on the tongue. So in the event that you do apply too much pressure, it's soft tissue. A horse can open its mouth to get away from the pressure of the bit and alleviate it a little bit at least. In a bitless or hackamore bridle, the horse can't get away from that pressure. If it's too much, if they open their mouths, it increases the pressure because they push into it. And there's a bunch of hard tissue and really, really sensitive face nerve. Shelby goes into all the science behind it and she has resources and it's such a good source to educate yourself on. If you're deciding which one that you should use, look into that. Try it on your horse. See if they go well in it. Some horses go way better in bitless. Some go way better in a bit. Zoe happens to be one that goes better in a bit and I know everyone that follows certain people on <laughs> YouTube will come at me and say, ah, you're just not training your horse correctly. Number one, it's illegal in eventing to ride without a bit in dressage. I have to. I don't know why it's legal or it's illegal to ride without a noseband. It shouldn't be. That kind of defeats the purpose of dressage, don't you think? The horse is supposed to be relaxed, supple, and obedient to the bit, and you're strapping its nose shut? I don't know. I screw myself over in dressage because I leave my noseband super loose so Zoe can open her mouth, but I'm more concerned about her comfort than my score. So long tangents about things, but that's why. I like aids in moderation. I use spurs. I carry a whip at shows. I don't think I've ever used it on Zoe. I mean, those things are tools in the event that you need them to make a communication clearer, and it should never be used to directly abuse. I mean, yes, 
people use whips, whips to punish and it's ignorant to say that they don't. However, I mean, it's just, it's personal preference and you can really only worry about you. Keyboard warrioring on somebody and saying, you're being abusive and you're blah, by using a bit or spurs. My spurs aren't on my horse all the time, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I never kick her with them either. And I don't use spurs on Zoe, but I mean, I don't kick with them. I just push to increase the pressure to ask them to move over rather than beating them with my leg to get them to move over. Does that make sense? And the same goes for bits. I know this is all over the place. Please try and follow me. But um, like with bits, if you have to increase the pressure on a hackamore, you're doing more harm to the horse by increasing that pressure on the hackamore, pulling more that the horse can't get away from than using a, say, hard bit or just a regular bit where you don't have to use as much pressure and you can get that clear communication right away the horse understands and then you can soften and relax and give the horse the reward does that make sense I hope so rhetorical question I hope that this is not offending anybody but I'm very passionate about these opinions I hope they came out clear editing Jill voice over if you have to <laughs> um, nah fam we good okay last question number 50 has social media influenced me or impacted me as a person slash writer and I would say absolutely it's dumb to say that it hasn't of course social media impacts me I mean I have like like I think 58 and a half thousand followers currently um, on Instagram and then I have like 21,000 subscribers on YouTube I have so many people watching me and if I say something wrong or if I mess up writing I get flooded with <laughs> attacks and claims and all this and that and so many people looking up to me and asking me questions and I have educated myself so much more because of the people asking me for advice and I mean I don't want to be somebody that is like mm, go do it yourself like Meh. I mean you should <laughs> but um, I mean I want to be helpful and I want to educate young riders and encourage them to educate themselves and pay attention to what their horses are telling them so yeah I mean and if I'm not that person then I am a hypocrite and I can't spread that message if that makes sense anyway um, yeah it has impacted me it makes me conscious of my riding because it is so out there and when I go to shows there are people watching me without me knowing it or they take pictures of me and send it to me later and they're like yo I saw you and I'm like ah okay say hi next time so I knowing that you're there but yeah I don't know it's it's definitely impacted me and made me more conscious of things and made me more proactive so I think it's impacted me for the better there's definitely a level of stress with the hate and whatnot but I mean in all fairness I have a wonderful support group and viewing base and I don't really get a whole lot of hate so thank you guys so much for that thank you for watching this has been 50 questions with Jill <laughs> oh my god I'm so tired of talking my voice is like done um but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video I will be sure to hit up that advice video later on so make sure that you're following my Instagram so that you know when that is posted and hopefully I can answer your question. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Okay, bye bye. The end. Okay, let's get this mess sorted out, okay? Now don't move. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> I am going to try and wrap through these. Wrap? I'm going to try and spin. <laughs> um, uh, number six. Wait. Yeah. How mad am I that Rolex is no longer a Rolex? A Rolex. How long? Shoot. Oh, I have a double question. Oh no. Mm. Okay, number 45. Uh, 40. Uh. <laughs> um, uh, on to the questions. No. <laughs>